What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and to another episode here with the Mobile Bay Bears expansion franchise. We are at September 1st, 2038. It is roster expansion day. We talked about the uh, players that we brought in for expansion. Um, this episode, I'm going to try and quickly go through uh, September for you guys and then just kind of jump into the playoffs instead of trying to break them up into two episodes. I think that we can get through September pretty quickly, um, depending on maybe some injuries and you know things like that, but um, I'm going to fast forward it as quickly as I can um, and just kind of keep you guys updated with the division race uh, we were only a game and a half back we we're 78 and 55 and the minnesota twins are 79 and 53 so we have closed that gap uh, right behind that is or behind us is the new york yankees they're 71 and 61 so i think we're pretty comfortably in second uh, unless we have an abysmal september um, and we are in first place in the wild card so i think we're definitely on our way to another playoff appearance. Um, we just have to hope that it's in the form of a division championship. Uh, that's where we want to be, so we don't have to play in the wild card round. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated um, and you know let you know how the division is, is shaping up as we close in towards the end of September. Uh, before that, too, I, I want to uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, uh, interact with me. Uh, that is one of the good things about doing this on YouTube is I get I get your guys' feedback and I get uh, someone else to essentially play the game with because this is a very lonely game. <laughs> but either way, I appreciate you guys watching. It's been really fun to make content and put it up on youtube i think we're closing in on like 90 episodes which is which is crazy uh and hopefully in this episode we can get into the playoffs and through the playoffs and maybe another world series championship as we try to go for three peat which is kind of unprecedented in this game i feel like it's pretty tough to to win this in general and then you win two in a row and you're like okay what's going on and now it's like maybe i can win three because uh, we got the team to do it we definitely have almost a, the same team that's one of the past two years so they're still good they're still playing well and i'd argue they're playing better right now than they ever have as i mentioned in our last episode with the um the stats all first except for a couple of categories in pitching and defense and then a first in a ton of categories top three in majority of the categories except for like two on the hitting and um base running stats so outstanding play from this team and it's just been wild so let's see if we can do it again um First and foremost, we have to play the final game of a three-game set between Baltimore. We did, we did win the first two games of that series, so hopefully we can finish it out with a sweep here that is on the road. And then we stay on the road, but this time we roll to the West Coast for a quite extended West Coast trip. Three games at Colorado, three game in the at Los Angeles against the Dodgers, and then three games in Oakland against the the Oakland A's and then we finally come back home against Chicago Cleveland and then what is shaping up to be a really big series there against the Minnesota Twins hopefully we're well ahead of them at that point but uh, nonetheless we do get them three more times and then we get three games against Toronto and then we go back on the road against Tampa Bay and then it looks like we come home to finish out the season with a four-game series against New York that rolls into October. So hopefully when we get to that point, we will maybe have secured a, for sure, a playoff spot, if not the division, and we can rest up some of our pitchers and, and get our pitching matchup set. But 
uh, we will see. I am going to push through this and I will keep you guys updated. And to check in with you guys, we lost the last game in that three-game set against Baltimore, but then we won two of three at Colorado, and now we've won the first two games against the Dodgers, and that has officially put us into first place in the division by a half a game over the Minnesota Twins. So really good to, to get on top, and now we just got to continue to to play well and keep putting wins together of note the new york yankees are kind of playing out of their mind right now they're only five and a half games back they have really come on strong so uh, they are definitely mathematically still in this thing and playing as well as they are there's definitely a chance that they they get there and get to the division lead if if we don't play well and jump us in the wild card so uh, we're still five and a half over them, but don't need to let up now, that's for sure. Now that we got the lead, let's keep winning and hopefully pull away from this thing. And some injury news here. Tim Vox is going to be out for about five to six weeks. He did fracture his hand. Um, not a huge blow. Uh, he has been our DH against righties. And hasn't played that well this year. He's got okay numbers, 251 average, 10 home runs, 56 RBIs. He does have a negative war, so really not a huge loss besides having a lefty bat in the lineup. So uh, I will throw him on the injured list and um, figure out who it is that we are going to call up in his place. Uh it will probably be Javorski Lane. I will probably just pull him up. So he got back a couple days ago, and I just sent him on a rehab assignment to get him back and and healthy. Um, he played in one game and went five for five, or excuse me, two for five uh, with a double. And uh, yeah, so I. I guess now I'll just pull him up. I was going to give him a few games to get warm again, but with the injury to Tim Vox, it just makes sense to pull him back in and see where we can put him in the lineup and then go from there. All right, uh, just to show you guys what I did with Javorski, um, I'm going to put him at second base. He plays a really good defensive second base. And instead of having Rigsby be the DH, which we have been doing, He's been DHing against left-handed pitchers, while um, Vox was DHing against right-handed pitchers. So we we're just flip-flopping. I mean, he's doing well. He's hitting 317, seven home runs, 26 RBIs, no complaints. Um, but unfortunately, he's just the odd man out in this scenario. Uh, he, he plays backup first base as well. So, but he doesn't run and. It's tough, right? Like, I have first world problems. <laughs> so, I, I, he's the odd man out. I am going to leave him as the backup for both sides of left-handed pitchers and right-handed pitchers on the DH role. And then he's also going to back up first baseman Danny Fouts. What I've done, though, since I put Javorski Lane at second, I didn't take out Danny Skelding. I just put Danny Skelding at DH roll and um, kept his bat in the lineup because his defense was eh, not that great, right? So uh, I think we shored up our, our middle infield, which you guys know that's big for me. And uh, with, with him at uh, Javorski at second, that's great defense. And then Aguirre is also playing really solid defense at shortstop and just absolutely killed the ball as well. So he's probably going to win Rookie of the Year. Um, but I think that really makes this a just a killer lineup and just a killer defensive team. Just guys just everywhere can just ball. And that's, that's great. Uh, first world problems, Rigsby's just the odd man out. 
Uh, him and Medina will get some backup time. Uh, of note, Medina is playing well. He's hitting 306 in 17 games. So doing well considering um, his, his limited exposure to the major leagues thus far. So hopefully he continues in that utility role playing, playing well for us. Um, also, it is September 10th, and we are now two games up in the division over the Minnesota Twins. We have been playing really well. Uh, we swept the Dodgers, so we have lost uh, two games in the month. We are 5-2 and two on this month, so off to a good start here in September. Uh, we have three more games against Oakland before we come home for that long homestead. That, is, that includes three games in with M- Minnesota. So we'll go ahead and push push forward and uh, see where we're at whenever that series happens. Well, unfortunately, we just got a big blow. Uh, Luis Castillo, our stud, our star, strained his MCL, and he's going to be out six weeks. What a blow. Tough blow, tough, tough blow. Um... Man, would have loved to have had this bat in the lineup in the playoffs again. But it is what it is. Uh, six weeks, yeah, it puts him out until almost November. So that's going to probably end his season, un- unfortunately. Uh, 28 home runs, 99 RBIs, 284 average, a 146 WRC plus with a 5.9 war. He almost mirrored exactly what he did the season prior. Just put up absolutely just crazy numbers in his three seasons with us. Man, it's a tough blow. Not what you want to see right before the playoffs. It's terrible. So now we gotta now we gotta replace this. Um, and I don't know how, but hopefully we can find someone that uh, gets hot and stays hot through the playoffs. Let me. Go and see who we're going to call up. All right. Uh, we've made the decision. Julio Aldo or Alado is going to be the player that we call up, the young prospect, 24 years old, pretty much fully developed, great speed, uh, great defense, uh, has a solid bat as well, and he's a left handed hitter. So, all in all, a good player, not going to be Luis Castillo, but hopefully can provide some valuable at-bats and steal some bases and be a threat on the base path and uh, produce some runs. So he is going to be called up and immediately thrown, in, thrown into a starting role in right field in the midst of a division title run as we are five games up in the division as we have one more game to play before we play minnesota the yankees have caught the minnesota twins they are only six and a half games back from us and they are a game and a half behind the twins so that is interesting uh they have been playing really well down the stretch but we are 89 and 59 we have also clinched a playoff berth at this point so we will definitely be going to the playoffs now it's just a matter of will be we be will we be going as a wild card or will we be going as a division title uh hopefully it's in the form of a title so we will push this thing up into the uh division showdown with the minnesota twins all right, and the showdown is on. We are 90 and 59. We did pick up a half a game on the Twins. Now we are uh, six games up, and the Yankees are also six games back. Uh, so they have tied the Twins, and hopefully this series goes the way we want it, and we can lock up the division here. In this three game stretch, uh, we have won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in a row. So huge for us. Uh, and then 
We won three games in a row before that, only losing two games in our last, what is that, math in public, 12 games, 12 or 13 games, we've only lost two games. And then on the month, we are 12 and four, so definitely on pace to be our best month of the year. Of the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but time to seal the deal. Three games against Minnesota, and that could, I think, put us in a pretty good position to lock up this series we may not lock it up until we get to like tampa bay um, or maybe even new york they're playing out of their minds right now so they're playing just as good as we are so if they can keep pace then you know it could be interesting coming into the last series in october hopefully we don't make it interesting hopefully we go ahead and push through this thing and, and seal the deal so let's find out and great news, we swept the Minnesota Twins. They are now nine games back. The Yankees have jumped them. They are seven games back from us. We sit 93 and 59, and the win streak continues. Now we play three games against Toronto before we roll on the road to Tor our Tampa Bay. Uh, hopefully we can lock up the division within the next two series so that the series against the Yankees is not a nail biter and decide the division um, that would not be ideal but can't control that I guess uh, of note I do want to check in on one player Mason Davis um, <clears throat> struggling a little bit average wise he's only hitting 238 right now so he's definitely slumping but uh, he is Three home runs shy of another 2020 season. So I know he's missed some time this year, and that might eventually cost him in the 2020 hunt. Uh, but he does have 22 stolen bases, and he has 17 home runs. So he's right there. Um, need him to, to come through with a couple more home runs, and uh, hopefully he can do it. He did just hit a home run in the last game, so hopefully that is... The spark that he needed, he went three for five and uh, with the home run and two RBIs. So hopefully that gets him going and uh, he can get hot going down the stretch and into the playoffs. Uh, but let's go ahead and see how Toronto and Tampa Bay shape out. Well, another rough injury report. Uh, Jeff Sanborn, who has been dominating as our setup guy, 252 ERA in 58 games. He has 21 holds for us. He just fractured his elbow and he's going to be out seven months. Um, so he's going to be out to obviously the, the rest of this year and then looks uh, math in public. I don't know, March, April, May time frame before he comes back. Unfortunate. Um, played been pitching amazing for us this year with a 1.3 war, 71 FIP minus, and a 172 ERA plus. Big loss for us. Uh, that's two tough losses in September, not what we wanted. Also, Danny Skelding, our you know second baseman power hitter right now, has blurred vision and is going to be uh, day to day for four days. So it's going to influence his hitting moderately. Uh, I am going to sit him for the next four days because it is going to influence his hitting, and that's essentially what he's. That's all he does right now is DH. Um, and additionally, we need to win. Um, we are four games up on the New York Yankees. They have caught us. We have not played well, and it is the season-ending series. We have lost four games in a row and five in our last six after going on that nice win streak, but we are in the last series of the season, and we play four games against the Yankees. So if we get swept, it becomes a tie, and I don't know who holds the tiebreaker, but we just need to find a way to win one of these next four games, and that will clinch the division. So I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna sit Skelding and uh, probably put in Rigsby um, who has done well for us all year um, just was odd man out whenever it came time to, to switch up the DHs so we'll see how it goes and uh, hope for the best we just need one win here boys 
And as much as I try to manipulate his service time, I am going to have to call up Pat Kramer uh, on the last four games of the 2038 season. Uh, he's he's the best I got in the minor leagues, and I got to replace a pretty good pitcher. And so I'm going to go ahead and call him up, let him make his major league debut, throw him in the bullpen, and hope for the best. Uh, he's got good good stuff. Been pitching well in AAA, so. Um, He's the best I got, and I need to replace a pitcher that was dominating. So hopefully he can come in and pitch well and uh, give us a spark here in the bullpen down the stretch and into the playoffs. And for the third time in franchise history, we are the American League East division champions. We did get the win 5-3 to three in Game 1 against New York, so we got, got the, the drama out of the way early. Uh, So now the next three games really don't matter as far as where we are going into the playoffs. Um, We're going to continue to play them. I need to take a look and see where we're at seeded-wise. Pretty sure the Mets and the Padres are doing well. They're in the National League, though I think we're still the best in the American League. I'll have to take a look, but I still have three games left. Um... Going to give a couple guys a break, but I uh, have to give Mason a, a chance here. He's got to hit two home runs in three games. Uh, so he's at 18 home runs for the year. Um, needs two. We just need two to get this dude to 2020. Uh, he would have played 106 games. Uh, so it'd be pretty cool if he'd get 2020 in 106 games. Uh, if not, it's understandable. Uh, injured this year, but still be cool to get him that. Oh uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to the end of the season, and then um, we'll go from there. And the 2038 regular season has come to an end, and we have swept the New York Yankees. Um, very, very good to see that. Uh, finished the season 98 and 64. I believe that is our third best. 95, our second best season prior to that was 95 wins. So his second best season in wins, um, second to only last year is 104 wins. Um, we did finish seven games up in the division, so we kind of ran away with it there at the end, even though we were questioning it whenever we went into the New York Yankees um, series. Uh Funny enough, they were ahead of the Minnesota Twins, and then the sweep allowed the Twins to jump them in the wild card. Um, Both teams still go to the playoffs, so three teams from the American League East, two teams from the AL West, and three teams from the, or excuse me, yeah, three teams from the East and two teams from the West. Um, And then on the NL side, sorry guys, I'm looking around at other things here (laughs) as I'm trying to talk to you, probably not smart. Four teams from the NL East made the playoffs and two teams from the NL West made the playoffs. Over here though on the side of the AL leaders, Danny Fouts finished with 47 stolen bases. Castillo finished with a 914 on base plus slugging. Um... Matt Simbrat and Chris DeBose finished first and second in the American League in wins at 17 and 16. Chris DeBose finished first in strikeouts at 247. And then Chris DeBose also finished third in pitcher war at 6.3. Um, taking a look at our team stats, has to be. Without a doubt, the most dominant defensive and pitching season in Major League Baseball history. We have finished the season and we are literally first in every statistical category except for base on balls where we finished ninth. An absolutely wild stat. Um... I don't think I've ever seen that in this game. I don't know if I've ever watched anybody finish the season with those rankings. Any of the YouTubes or 
just just wild. I have no idea how it happened. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we prioritize pitching and defense, and we do love guys that can hit as well. But um, pitching and defense is, is huge for us in, in our development and in our drafting and things like that. We we do like those well-rounded players, and if they're not well-rounded, we would prefer them to be heavier on the defensive side, if you will. Uh, so that's just my style, and uh, it's working out. I think uh, there's a little bit of luck involved as well with the development of the the development random randomness, if you will, for the game. But uh, it's working out for us. And then on the offensive side, we, we had an outstanding year on offense. Um, just a real rounded team. Our Pythagorean record is supposed to be 106 and 56. So if we would have played as good as the game thought we would with the stats that we have, we would have had our best season uh, in franchise history. Uh, we did only finish 98 and 64, so a little below that, eight games below that to be exact. But it's all good. We got what we wanted. We got the division title. We got the bye in the first round, and now we sit back and wait and see who our opponent's going to be in the divisional matchup. Uh, we'll take a look at the playoff tree. Uh, so it looks like we're going to wait the opponent of the White Sox and Yankees series. So it very well could play the Yankees again. I do not want to play the Yankees again because that would be just terrible luck if we play them and then we get schwacked by them after sweeping them <laughs> in the last four games of the season. That would be a tough way to go out. Um, but yeah, so the White Sox and Yankees play and then the Rays and Twins um, also have a matchup. Winner of those two game or those two series will play the Bay Bears and the Kansas City Royals, respectively. On the National League side, the Cincinnati Reds and Chicago White or Chicago Cubs, excuse me, will face off, and then the Sa the Salt Lake City Saints and the Miami Marlins will face each other. You guys might remember we faced the Saints last year in the World Series and swept them. So uh, the, Na the National League, the defending National League champions are in the wild card series this year. The San Diego Padres and the New York Mets received the first round buys and they await their opponents in the division series. Um, we will go ahead and take a look at our season um, overview, I guess, if you will. We're already 20-something minutes into this episode, and there's no point in starting the playoffs um, now, at least. Uh, what I will do is I'll do a season recap real quick, and then I will sim it up until our matchup in the division series. So whatever the playoff tree looks at like at that moment, we will sim it up until we play our first game, and then we will cut the episode and pick up the playoffs in the very next episode, hoping that the playoff episode is a full-length episode um, and it's not cut short, but you never know. Yeah, um, we were on the brink of elimination last year and the year before, and we pulled it out. So hopefully we don't have that issue this time where we're on the brink of elimination. Um, hopefully we can just finish the season or finish the playoffs without ever facing elimination and get the three-peat. Uh, so I'm banking on that episode being a normal length episode with just the playoffs. If we do get knocked out early in the playoffs, then we'll begin the off season and talk through what, what we're going to be looking at doing and potentially seeing what our budget is and seeing if we need to, if we have any money for extensions and things like that going forward. Um, but yeah, let's do a quick recap of the the season. Uh, we'll start at pitching since it was the most dominant that we've ever had. Matt Simbrat had, went 17 and four with a 2.81 ERA. He led the league in uh, wins for the second straight year. He led the league in BABIP and he led the league in WHIP. 
Um, had a 5.9 war. He started 20 or 33 games. 21 of those were quality starts. Uh, oh, of note, he did receive. We did get an updated scouting report, our development update from Simbrat, and he's lost four miles an hour on his fastball, and he's lost a little bit of his stuff and, I believe, control rating. So I don't know if that's just a one-off for a development update, but uh, at 27, almost 28 years old, could he potentially be seeing a, a regress in some of his stuff? I don't know. Um, but it was really weird to see his name on the development update, and they were all negative updates. So just of note, probably won't be an issue for us because he's going to be a free agent in the offseason. Arturo Avalos, 11-9, 3.22 ERA, 33 starts. Of those 33 starts, only seven were quality starts, so really bad ratio there he just i guess he just wasn't going the six innings is what it looked like as i was kind of keeping track of him um but nonetheless you know 3.32 era at 170 innings not not bad uh, but explains why he was struggling for most of the year to get above the 500 mark on his win record win loss record so he did finish 11 and 9 but for the majority of the year he was below that 500 mark on his win loss record so uh do have him again next year we'll be making roughly about 11 million dollars um hopefully he can put up another solid year like he did this year he's been been well for us chris debose we talked about him 16 11 2.84 era 33 starts 20 of those were quality starts 11 strikeouts per nine innings that led the league and he had 247 strikes out strikeouts which also led the league a 6.3 war and a 68 fib minus with a 153 era plus he's definitely in the hunt for another cy young next is mike haber uh, 12 and 11 3.41 era 29 starts 19 of those were quality starts uh 83 fifth minus with the 128 era plus and a 4.1 war nate price what a what a godsend he was what a move that was to move him from the bullpen to um the rotation he went 10 and 3 with a 2.71 era and 11 starts and of those 11 starts, five of them were quality starts, a 76 fit minus with a 160 ERA plus and a 2.5 war. Uh, he is day-to-day -day right now with a strained back, but he is uh, expected to be back in, in roughly a week. So hopefully we'll have him back for the division series. Hopefully we won't even need him actually for the divisional series. Maybe we can just win it with the first three pitchers and... Uh, go on about our day to the American League Championship. All right, moving to the bullpen, Judas Nangare, uh, closer, 38 saves, 2.99 ERA in 59 innings, had a 109 fifth minus and a 150 ERA plus, and actually had a negative war. So an interesting, interesting year for him. Um, but got 38 saves for us. All right, uh, next is oh, wrong button. CJ Tariff, our Tardif, 4.72 ERA, 45 games, uh, had a 77 fit minus and a 92 ERA plus. Not the greatest uh, year, uh, about, kind of a back and forth year for him. Um, had a couple of games that really blew up his ERA, but yeah, uh, hopefully he has a better year next year in his last year on our contract. Jesus Torado. 3.44 ERA, 7-3 and win-loss record, 14 holds, 1 save, 91 fib minus, and a 126 ERA plus. He is locked up for the next 4 to 5 years. Uh, 2041 is when he is a free agent. All right, next is Pat Kramer. We just called him up. No, really, 3.2 innings pitched. He has zero ERA. He just called up the last season or last series of the season. Andy Mize um, only pitched in five and two thirds innings. He's been up for a little while, just hasn't been used. 
and had a 9.53 ERA. So would like to see him get used a little bit more and see if that 9.53 ERA can come down to normal. Uh, next is Steve Destacio, 4.57 ERA, two holds, a negative war, a 125 FIP minus, and a 95 ERA plus. So not the greatest year. Um, it was average at best. Josh Cawley did get his uh, ERA below that four mark, so he had a 3.99 ERA in 124 innings, a 123 FIP minus with a 109 ERA plus. So uh, not great. Hopefully he can have a good postseason for us. Last but not least is Nate Anderson, a 3.57 ERA in 32 games, 92 FIP minus, a 122 ERA plus and a 2-1 win-loss record. Let's move over to the offense. All right, offensively, Alejandro Aguirre, uh, outstanding rookie year, 285, 20 home runs, 67 67 RBIs, 16 doubles, uh, 348 on-base percentage, OPS of 852, WRC plus of a 131 with a 3.6 war. Definitely, probably the front runner for rookie of the year. Who's Julio Aldo? Um, very limited uh, experience and sample size. 13 games, but in those 13 games, he hit one home run, seven RBIs, had four runs, three doubles. A stolen base and hit 326 with a 144 WRC plus and a 0.6 WAR. So, uh, small sample size, but uh, doing well, playing very well for us, and hopefully, is a spark that we need in the playoffs. All right, Mason Davis. Uh, we've talked about him, and it's unfortunate he finished one home run shy of a 2020 season. 19 home runs. 69 RBIs, 24 stolen bases, 237 average with a 297 on base percentage, a 93 WRC plus, and a 2.7 war. So by far his least productive season in his career. Um, Also the least amount of games he has ever played in his career at 106. Before that, it was 119 games. So, unfortunate. Would love to have seen him get to the 20 home run mark. Uh, He has never hit below that. But this year, like I said, just didn't play enough games. Still hit 19 home runs in those 106 games. He's now at 280 on his career. 257 doubles and 220 stolen bases. It's very conceivable that... He's a 300, 300, 300 guy within the next two to three years, I would say, Um, which is a pretty pretty cool stat. I don't know how many 300 doubles, 300 home runs, and 300 stolen base players there are in Major League history, but I would imagine that once you get to those numbers that that club is a lot smaller than than people would think. But yeah, we'll see. He's got one more year with us, and then uh, he'll be a free agent. We're going to try and find some money to lock him up and keep him with this team for for his career, even though it's probably not the smart thing to do if you want to win games. But no one ever said he has to be the starting center fielder every, every year. Mike Flores is... Kind of a disappointment, but uh, he'll be a free agent at the end of this year. Eight home runs, 30 RBIs, 218 average with a 95 WRC plus. So it didn't really have a good season, but didn't really play that much as well. Danny Fouts, 282 average. We uh, We mentioned he had, what, the second most stolen bases, 47 in the league. Nine home runs, 54 RBIs. He led the league again in plate appearances, 40 doubles, five triples, a 111 WRC plus and a 3.8 war. So another outstanding season from Mr. Danny Fouts, who is currently at 1,131 career hits and already at 271 career stolen bases. Next year, he could eclipse, should eclipse 300 stolen bases, and he's already got 325 doubles. He's never going to get the 300 home runs, but... 
Um, still cool to see the stolen base and doubles stack up for Mr. Fouts. Eric Guy, 260, 13 home runs, 63 RBIs, 102 WRC plus with a 2.8 war. Very good season for him and played well defensively for us too. Vicente Jasso, so good to see this for him. A bounce back year, 16 home runs, 72 RBIs, 28 doubles, had 140 hits, hit 290, also had two stolen bases, a 335 on base percentage, a 112 WRC plus, and a 3.8 war. Huge bounce back season for Vicente at his 30 year mark on this planet, or this virtual planet, if you will. Next is Javorski Lane. Played 122 games, four of seven home runs, 62 RBIs, 265 average, 30 stolen bases, 101 WRC plus with a 3.5 war. Solid season for Mr. Javorski Lane. Carl Medina, 253 average, no home runs, five RBIs, eight runs scored, 44 WRC plus and a negative war. Only played in 25 games and... Uh, didn't really produce much, if you will. Brendan Rohr, uh, 277 average, 8 home runs, 68 RBIs, 7 stolen bases, had a 2.2 war with a 95 WRC+. plus. A little bit lower than what he usually does, but still overall a decent season for the third baseman. Next is Jonathan Rigsby. Rigsby. Only played in 55 games, but had a 309 average with a 7 home runs and 27 RBIs with a 116 WRC plus and a .4 war. And next is Danny Skelding, 124 games, 27 home runs, 88 RBIs, 11 stolen bases this year. That is a career high, 266 average. 117 WRC plus with a 2.1 war. So another outstanding season from the second baseman slash DH. It is his third season with the club and he is turning out to be a pretty solid young player for us. Last but definitely not least is Jeff Taylor, a player that I have no idea how he pulled this off. Played in the same amount of games this year as he did last year. The results were completely different. He had, uh, in 43 games, four home runs, 15 RBIs, a 278 average, a 109 WRC plus, and he had a 1.1 war versus last year's three home runs, 12 RBIs, 188 average, 47 WRC plus, and a negative war. Absolutely flipped his uh, season in the opposite direction this year and I couldn't be ex more excited um, he's 32 years old he's definitely gonna start declining I don't know if I'm gonna offer him the arbitration level that he wants he's probably gonna get about three million dollars especially after that season um, but did exactly what we need him to do this year and played a, a excellent role at catcher when Josso needed a breather. So both of our catchers performed really well for us this year, and that was very, very vital in our success uh, this year, I believe. So that is the full recap of the team. And um, now what I'll do is, like I said, I'll fast forward to the game that we will play, the first game we will play in the playoffs and see who our divisional opponent will be. All right, the divisional round matchups are set. We did get the matchup that we really didn't want. Um, we drew the New York Yankees. So they, they swept the White Sox. The Twins swept the Tampa Bay Rays. So the Twins will face the Kansas City Royals. So all three uh, American League East teams still in it. Um, also, on the National League side, the Cubs beat the Reds, and then the Marlins beat the defending National League champion Salt Lake City Saints, and they will face the San Diego Padres. So there officially will not be a World Series rematch as the Saints were taken down in the wild card round. 
So that is the divisional matchups on both sides. Is not what we really wanted, like I said, but at the end of the day, we've beat the Yankees before. We swept them the last time we played them. Hopefully we can sweep them here and get out of this thing in three and move on to the American League Championship where something tells me we might be facing the Minnesota Twins. Um, that would be interesting as well, uh, considering they led the division most of the season until we finally took them over <clears throat> in September. So that will all be left in the next episode for us to find out. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and sticking along around this long. I'm approaching 90 episodes, and uh, I know some of them can be a bit long and boring, but either way, you guys are still watching, and I do appreciate it. So if you would, like, subscribe, comment, uh, let me know what you guys think, If you're uh, how you're feeling about the, the playoff push this year, and can, can we make the three-peat happen? Uh, it's going to be tough. We got some tough opponents ahead to include the, the New York Yankees here in the division series so um be interesting to see hopefully we can make the three-peat happen we're down a couple players uh, injury bug bit us a little bit there in september but luckily for us we have a good farm system and good development for players that could come right in and step into these key roles and hopefully perform um, as they have thus far and hopefully they can continue that here in october so we'll find out in the next episode how it all plays out. But uh, until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.